Hello, good morning. Our discussion will cover Input and Output Organizations Chapter 4.2.3, Handling Multiple Devices. Pero bago ang lahat, kailangan muna natin malaman itong dalawa na to. The first one is interrupts. A device or a number of devices will send signals to the CPU. The CPU will stop its current processing to serve the device. The processor waits for a signal from a device and then stop whatever it is doing to serve its particular device. Interrupts are more efficient when it comes to speed and CPU time, but is complex to implement. And the next one is polling. The CPU will poll or check its devices for them to send data and then serve it. The processor scan each devices and ask if it is ready to send data. Otherwise, it will loop through each until one or many is served. This is the simplest to implement, but could create spoilage in CPU time and has high latency or lags when inputting and Let outputting. us now consider the situation where a number of devices capable of initiating interrupts are connected to the processor. Because these devices are operationally independent, there is no definite order in which they will generate interrupts. Ibig sabihin, ang apat na ito ay walang order kung sino mauna, pangalawa, pangatlo, pangapat na nag-generate ng interrupt. So, meron tayong mga ways para maalaman yon. So, ang una nun is yung vectored interrupts. So, sa vectored interrupts, to reduce the time involved in the polling process, a device requesting an interrupt may identify itself directly to the processor. Then the processor, processor can immediately start executing the corresponding interrupt service routine. A device requesting an interrupt can identify itself by sending a special code to the processor over so, the bus. So, ganito lang yung process nyan. So, halimbawa, itong apat na itong devices na nakakonect at may kanya-kanyang interrupt. So, meron din silang sarili-sarili mga addresses. Let's say A1, A2, A3, and A4. Ngayon, syempre, para magkaroon ng interrupt, kailangan meron silang sariling interrupt service routines. So, uh, ilalagay dito sa table. At interrupt service routine 1, ISR2, ISR3, and ISR4. Ngayon, itong mga in, uh, uh, memory itong mga memory access dito sa devices, ilalagay yan dito sa interrupt vector table. A1, A2, A3, A4. So, itong mga memory access na to na galing sa ating mga devices, syempre, yung sarili niyang interrupt service routines, may sari-sarili ding mga uh, memory access. So, in-name natin silang M1, M2, M3, M4. Tapos, para matawag natin yung, kasi, bago, kailangan, bago magkaroon ng interrupt na do sa devices, kailangan meron silang sariling interrupt service routines. So, Titingnan lang natin yung devices na pwedeng i-connect mula dito hanggang dito. So, itong A1, kay M1, M2, M3, M4. Ngayon, sa pro programmer's pers perspective ito. So, yung device natin, alimbawa, D1, yung address niya is A1. So, hanapin yung memory access niya dito, A1, na nakatapat kay M1 na merong interrupt service routine 1 at doon gagana lang yung devices. Ngayon, bakit kailangan pa paikot-ikot yung mga uh, memory accesses? Kung pwede namang, ano ba, tanggalin tong A1, tapos palitan ng M1. Uh, hindi kasi mababago yun nandito. So, ibig sabihin nun, magiging fix tong mga ISR na to at mawala ng flexibility. The same arrangement are often used when several devices are involved, in which case execution of a given ISR, once started, always continues to completion 
before the processor accepts an interrupt request from a second device. For some devices, however, a long delay in responding to an interrupt may create erroneous operations. This suggests that I.O. devices should be organized in priority. That means, in nested in interrupt, naka, uh, nagkakaroon siya ng multi-level na priority sa devices kung alin yung uh, uunahin na devices dun sa interrupt. So, sa uh, diagram niya, so parang ganito lang siya. So, yung D1, yung may highest na priority sa processor. So, dito yung INTR and dito yung INT... Ngayon, may mga cases naman na sabay-sabay yung mga interrupts na pumapasok. Minsan naman is nauna yung isa tapos kasunod yung isa bago matapos yung naunang interrupt service routine. Pero in some cases kasi or some devices is nagkakaroon ng delay sa interrupt na nagkakos ng erroneous ng operation. So sinasuggest nito na magkaroon ng priority doon sa organization nung pagpasok ng mga interrupt. So dito sa nested interrupt is meron siyang multi uh, multi level priority doon sa devices and sa interrupt na pumapasok sa processor. Uh, dito sa drawing parang ang nangyayari lang is uh, mauuna ang D1 since siya ang pinakamalapit sa processor. That means siya yung may highest priority compared to D2, D3 and so on so forth na mga devices na nakakonect doon. Tapos, syempre, si D2 is yung second priority. Tapos, habang papalayo yung mga devices dito sa processor, is uh, lumala, uh, lumulow yung priority niya. Nagkakaroon ng cases in which yung mga devices is sunod-sunod or isahan kung magpasa ng interrupt. So, kailangan magkaroon ng isang way para malaman kung alin ba dito sa mga devices ang uunahin na magkaroon ng interrupt uh, service routines. So, uh, kung magiging isang multi-level priority ito is uh, magiging straightforward lang na parang inulit lang siya. So, ang pinaka-best na uh, way dito is ipopol lahat ng status ng input and output devices at ito yung magiging isang simplest na mechanism. So, kung titingnan natin, ah, uh, titingnan natin is, lahat ng devices ay nakakonect sa isang single line ng interrupt uh, request line. Tapos, meron siyang interrupt uh, acknowledge line na nakapoint lang sa device 1. So, kasi ang ipapasang data kasi is mauna muna sa device 1. Tapos, sa kanya lang ipapasa kay device 2 kung hindi kailangan ng device 2 ng interrupt service, saka sila pupunta dun sa processor. Ngayon, uh, ang nangyayari dito is para na rin siyang hierarchy. Kasi kung sino yung pinakamalapit dun sa processor na device, ay siya ang pinakamalaking priority.